planning committee meeting on um, social development. Um, it's a very chilly morning in Cape Town this morning. Um, members, the, the purpose of today's um, meeting is for us uh, first to consider the negotiating mandate of the for the um, social assistance amendment bill and the uh, second part is going to be a briefing by the commissioner for children um, and it's a very warm welcome to all members officials and all the guests joining us via youtube just a reminder the rules of um, online conferencing at the wcpp um, all participants should please stay muted until um, they're uh, ready to speak Please use the chat function for points of order or raise your hand if you've got that available. And please identify yourself when speaking. So just tell me who you are. And then um, please use your mic and your video when you speak so that members of the public may see who you are. Who you are. I'm now going to ask members to introduce themselves. Good morning, Chairperson. Wendy Philander. Good morning. Good morning, Chairperson. Levin Fogel. Uh, good morning, Chairperson. Uh, Ricardo McKenzie. Are there any other members? Chairperson, address apologies to the member Baku Baku Force. Thank you. And you are acting as the alternate for member Baku Baku Force this morning, then, member Van Fogel? 100%, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, can I now ask the officials to um, introduce themselves as well? Good morning, members. Ben Jaza, Senior Professional Officer. Uh, good morning, everybody. Andre LaRue, Legal Advisor. Good morning, members. Uh, Namonda Chamke, Procedural Officer. Thank you very much. I think that's the list. A uh, very warm welcome to everybody this morning again. Namonde, besides Member Baku Baku Force, do we have any other apologies? No apology, Chair. Okay. Um, Member Makamba Boycha, are you back with us? Uh, Chairperson, yes, I'm back. Sorry, man, I recovered that one of my members is also in that meeting, so I have to leave it and come back to this one. Sorry about Please that. Please introduce yourself. We were just doing introductions. Okay, my name is uh, Member Makamba. I'm the member of the Social Development uh, Committee. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members, as indicated earlier, the purpose of this meeting is the consideration and deliberation on the final mandate of the Social Assistance Amendment Bill, Bill B8B of 2018. It's currently in the NCOP. Um, I'm going to refer you to the documentation received from the NCOP and in response to the negotiating mandate that we submitted to the NCOP. So just a reminder, when we deliberated this um, a week or so ago, we uh, supported the bill largely in principle, and we um, included a few amendments. So, members, I'm not sure if you have um, seen the, amendment, the, the sheet from the NCOP, I just want to see if I can oh, pop it on the screen, not that one. Um, are you able to see the, the, the document on the screen? Nope, not that one. Members, are you able to see the table on, on your screens? Yes, you can. Yes, sir. So this is the um, 
the table that we received back from the NCOPs, um, I'm not sure if it's their legal advisors, but this has all of the um, proposed amendments from the different provinces. So if we go down to the, the Western Cape, so we wanted them to amend um, Clause 10 uh, C to um, read the minister with con the concurrence of the Minister of Finance may determine additional payments linked to the social grant um, by notice in the Gazette, and we wanted the by notice in the Gazette added as a line. Um, I'm not sure what they mean by the comment is noted, wording noted for technical correction of the Act. I'm not sure if they are adjusting the Act. Um, Namunde, can you perhaps advise whether they've sent a reworked version of the, the bill? No, sir. And in your experience with the NCOP, what does comment is noted mean? I think they just noted the comment. Uh, I might be wrong. There's nothing more than that here. So they're not going to inclu include our uh, amendment. Uh, maybe ma'am. Uh, uh, the legal advisor can advise, Chair. Mr. Leroux, are you able to to advise us whether this means that they're going to include that in the, the final wording of the bill before it's um, adopted? Um, Chairperson, firstly, I agree that um, the communication might have been a bit clearer. Um, however, I do read that uh, comment as an acceptance of the submission by the Western Cape. Um, they say the wording is noted for technical correction, so to me it seems as though they intend to make the correction. Um, but I agree it's a bit vague. Um, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. So, members, we will assume for now that our amendment to Clause 10 still stands. Um, are, you, are you all in agreement that that amendment be um, included in our final mandate still? Yes. Uh, yes. Sorry, Chairperson, you, you're not, uh, my hand was up also. Sorry, no, I, I don't see, I don't have the screen open in front of me, but um, I note Member McKenzie. Uh, yes, I think our, our final amendment should still include um, because even the second comment, if you go down slightly down, it's not clear. Uh, the second comment on the screen, I have to print my copy. Um, if we can just send our uh, a final comments with a final mandate, we still include what we discussed at last week's meeting. Thanks. Okay. Um, Advocate LaRue, is that a new hand or is it still from earlier? I'm just far as I can see my hand is not raised. Okay, it's down now. So members, then the next point um, was our sort of substantial am amendment. It was an amendment to clause seven, and we wanted the the amendment um, in section 18.1 to read that the minister must, after consultation with parliament or with the relevant um, portfolio committee in parliament and the relevant standing committee at uh, provincial uh, legislature um, after consultation with those two groupings appoint the independent tribunal um, I don't know whether the, this paragraph that they've got here um, and the explanation that they have, again, it's a sort of a comment is noted, and then they indicate there that during discussions with the parliamentary legal advisors, they, they indicated that the process um, of consultation with parliament should not be provided for in the act or regulations, as there are existing protocols that govern this process, um, insofar as it relates to the appointment process. Um, and sort of technically what we were talking about was not the appointment process, we were just saying that we want both the, um, the National Assembly and the NCOP, as well as the provincial legislators, to be 
um, consultant. So members, my feeling would be that we again put forward our amendment and we say um, we can take out the words perhaps relevant portfolio committee, which I don't think we should, but I think this um, amendment should still stand as it is. Are we all in agreement with that? Yes, Chairperson. Yes, Chairperson. Chairperson, sorry, Chair. Yes, Mr. Daza? Uh, the mandating process for the final mandate doesn't allow provinces to give further amendments. It's either you agree or you don't agree with the, with the final, with the bill. So. Then it, um, it comes back to, again, the question of clarity on what is meant by comments are noted. Does that mean they accept it or? From, from my side, Chair, I, I would agree with Advocate Leru. It seems as if they will effect the changes that have been suggested by the Western Cape as far as the first comment is concerned. So that's that's what I, that's how I read it. But unfortunately, there's no option to give further amendments or even to set, to rescind the amendments that were proposed during the the, the negotiating mandate stage. Chair. Okay, so we're going to ex assume that comment is noted means accepted. Chairperson? Yes, Member Van Poco. So then my understanding is we, we the only thing that we need to do now is to, uh, ex to, to support or not support, but there's no, there's no need to discuss uh, the, 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 the document or the, the, our proposals. So it's uh, rather we, we, we support or not support as the province. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Member Van Hoek. We still need to go through this sort of clause by clause because we need to go through their, their response. So members, then the next one, um, the next um, amendment was also to clause seven, and we proposed there that a retired social worker who was registered with a professional body and a legal qualified person should form part of the independent tribunal. And the comment there was that it's again, it's noted. And as far as it relates to the appointment process, um, the department can consider to include this into the regulations. And that's where, where our um, sort of amendment stopped. Members, are there any comments on, on any of that? Um, are you happy with us um, deciding now whether we want to support the bill or not support the bill? Yes, Chairperson. Thank you. Members, can I get an indication? Um, I am going to propose that we support the bill. We still support the bill. In agreement, Chair. Yeah, in agreement, Chair, yeah. Okay. Um, and just in terms of the way forward, Namunde, the NCOP is meeting again. Do we know which date yet? They are, met they are meeting tomorrow, Chair. Uh, but the mandates need to be submitted today, the provincial mandate. Okay. Um, so, a member, after our discussions today, I'm going to now um, submit the committee's final mandate report for adoption. And that report will say that the Standing Committee on Social Development, having considered the subject of the Social Assistance Amendment Bill B8B of 2018, NCOP, Refer to the committee in terms of standing rule 217, recommends that the House confers on the Western Cape delegation and the National Council of Provinces the authority to support the bill. And the report is to be considered. And that means that the report will be considered by, by the House, by our Parliament. Members, are we all in agreement with that? Yes, Chairperson. Yes. Agreed, Chair. Thank you very much.
Lamonde, is there any other housekeeping we need to do um, in relation to this piece of legislation? Um, the committee is done, Chair. It's only a matter of you signing the report. Then we send it to the to to the NSOP. But now the committee can move to the second point, which is to adopt the committee documents. Perfect. Thank you very much. Members, um, we're now going to move on to the minutes of the 24th of July, which feels like a lifetime ago. Namunde, shall I just put the minutes on the screen? Yes, Chair, you can. I don't know why I cannot uh, flag on this side. Members, are you able to see the um, document, the minutes of the 24th of July, a meeting that we had um, at 15.30? Feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah, we can. See, yes. Okay, so on page one, I table page one, which is the members present. Yep. Page two, and this meeting was the deliberation on vote seven, social development. Yes. Yeah. Um, for the Western Cape adjustments uh, appropriation of COVID bill, member Philander. Can you please go back to page one, chairperson, please? You were there, member Philander. Just making 100% sure. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> I saw you there. <laughs> okay, any amendments or additions on page two? No. Okay, uh, members. Um, noting that we we did also ask for information, which um, I think we we were it was received um, according to the doc the tracking document. But members, can I get a proposal and a second for the minutes of the twenty fourth of? I propose. Uh, thank you. Sir, propose. before you propose, I had my hand up. Oh yes, member Makamba Bocha. Sorry, I didn't see that. I've got a, a different screen open. Yeah. On the first page, I don't, I don't see any uh, apology put on my name, so I'm not sure if Namonde's office received an apology, because I don't see the first word in Namonde, can we include an apology for Member Makamba Boycha on page one? I will double check, Chair, if there was an apology tendered. Usually, if there is no apology, I don't include it in the minutes. But I will double check quickly. I will revert back to the committee. Okay, so pending, pending that amendment, the minutes is um, proposed by Member McKenzie and seconded by Member Philander. Um, but that's just pending the amendment of Member Makamba Poicha's um, apology if it was received. And then members will go on to the next set of minutes. And I'm trying to find, sorry, Namundi, are you sharing your screen as well? Or am I still sharing my screen? We are still sharing, Chair. Am I still sharing? Okay. So the next set of minutes would be the minutes of the 1st of September. I'm not sure. If you can are you able, all able to see that? Yes, Namundi, okay. the screen that's on is not mine. It's someone else's. Member McKenzie. Oh, with my, did I put my screen on? Sorry. But you, you welcome to share it. If if you've got it open, it's fine. Well, how did this happen? It's now the second time this happened in a meeting. This is Microsoft Teams. It's I'm sure Bill Gates is probably hacking us as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> so members, this was a meeting held on the first of September via Microsoft Teams, and I'm now tabling page one with the attendance. Can I just get a question on page one, which is applicable for all yes. pages? If you look at the, um, under the national department, the word national is in some cases in small letters, um, provincial in some cases in small letters, but then the D in department is in capital letters. 
and the NC of fees in capital letters, then the National Treasury, National Assembly, and the A and the N the T is in capital letters. So we just get consistency throughout the document. So you're asking why the N in national is in... If you see there, the national is in small letters N, the D is in capital, the S is in capital, the D is in capital. If you go to National Assembly, the N is in capital, but then it's in small letters. Uh, for example, provincial is the P is in small letters, but the D is in capital. Uh, um, I think I can answer that. Too. Yes, please. We, we, we put capital letters when we, when we refer to, the, uh, to an official name of an entity. So there is, there's nothing called the National Department of, so it's the Department of Social Development. But just to, to prove the separation between the provincial and national, we, we just put provincial but in small caps and national in small caps just to indicate that it's not the, the national nor the provincial department. But we can't put both N and D in capital letters. It's just to separate, just to indicate that the official name of that department is the Department of Social Development. But province and national is no official name. So that's why it's always in small letters. And you go to capital G. Okay, thank you. I learn every day. Okay, that's the capital letters policy in English grammar. Uh, members, I'm now tabling page two. This was the briefing provided by member Morentia Gillian on the Social Assistance Amendment Bill. Are there any changes or uh, things that needs to be excluded on page two? Page three. Okay, members, um, can I have a, a proposal and a seconder for the minutes of the meeting of the 1st of September? Yeah, proposed. Proposed by Member Mackenzie, seconded by? Seconded, Chair. Seconded by Member Delanda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, members. We're now going to the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of September. Member Mackenzie, are you still going to share that? Is that up here? Can you see? Uh, we can see, yes. If you, if you just go to page one. Can you see? Hmm? Member Bosman, can you see? Um, I can only see the resolutions. But members, also, you've, you've got this in front of you. So the meeting of the 15th of of September on page one, that's the attendance. I'm now yeah. tabling Nothing on the screen, Chair. Okay, let me just request control and I'll share. So that's the attendance uh, members. You're all able to see that? Yeah. Yes, yes, Jane. Okay. And now I'm tabling page two. This was the public hearing on the social assistance amendment bill. Uh, members, can I have a proposal and a seconder for the minutes of the 15th of September?
proposed chain. Thank you very much, Member Philander. Seconded chair. Thank you very much, Member Van Vogel. Well, the minutes of the 15th of September is duly adopted. Um, we're now going to the minutes of the 6th of October. Um, the first screen is just the attendance. Um, no Monday. Hi, Chair. Um, can I ask Member Brunkes, is he a full member of our committee or an alternate? He is a full member, Chair. Are we sure? Yes. Okay, we might just need to check the ATC on that because I saw that member Makamba Boitka is now the full member. But members are tabling phase. Huh? Yes, member McKenzie? What are you saying? No, I was just double checking whether Mr. Member Branca is, is a full member of this committee or whether it is member Makamba Boitka. Oh, okay. Because the last time I checked, it was member Makamba Poitra, but we just have to consult the, the last ATC that came out. So, members, any changes on page one? No. And then page two, which was us consider considering the negotiating mandate on the social assistance amendment bill. Members, can I get a proposal and a seconder for the minutes of the 6th of October? That's fine. So Second proposed by, thank you very much. Proposed by Member McKenzie and seconded by Member Philander. Um, members, I'm now going to open the committee program, the draft committee program. So we're currently now on the 13th of October. And this is the first part of our meeting we're about to conclude. The second part of the meeting is a status update on the operations of the Western Cape Commissioner for Children and the progress made in setting up the office of the commissioner. The next meeting, which um, we're hoping to schedule for October, if we can find time in the parliamentary program, is a briefing by children's organizations on the issues facing children as well as input by children on the various challenges facing children. Um, members, can I ask that for that meeting, we consider having an, an in-person meeting? Yeah, that's fine. And you would fine. remember that this, this issue stemmed from the participation of children where Molo Songololo accused us of not including children in our deliberations. And I'm also going to ask that we invite the Commissioner for Children to that specific meeting um, as well, as well as colleagues from the Department of Education in the Western Cape. Then our next uh, discussion is as an oversight visit to where DSD keeps the sanitary uh, pads for the Sanitary Dignity Project. So between myself and Amonde, we'll find some time to plot dates and we'll send it to members. And then our, our next meeting is a briefing by the Department of Transport and Public Works to brief the committee on the government transport and vehicle allocation specifically for social development. And if you remember, that is in relation to how social workers, um, the vehicles that social workers get allocated specifically on the, in the rural areas. And then the next um, agenda yeah, item is the provincial. Sorry, Namonde. I'm, we're going to run over time. I know you're worried about the yes. time. Yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so then the next meeting is the meeting by the provincial child welfare NGO to brief us on their programs. And then we've got a briefing by 
the delegate to the national and, and the national department on the uh, social assistance amendment bill. So that's, that will be once the bill is finalized. Members, I'm going to ask that you uh, take some time to peruse this program and that you also, uh, by maybe by the end of uh, this week, if you could send through to myself and Namonde any other items for discussion so we can start plotting the, the first half of next year as well. I would also like to propose that this committee undertakes an oversight visit to the Eden District Karua to look specifically at the operations of DSD in that area and that we identify a few organizations that we would like to, to look at. Um, I'm going to propose that we visit the child and youth care facility in George as well. But if you've got any ideas, I'm going to suggest that you, you send them through before the end of this week. Um, and then we can plot them on, and then maybe we can adopt this program at our next meeting. Yes. Uh, is that in order? Yes, sir. Perfect. Um, members, then that concludes this part of our meeting. Um, Namonde, do I understand correctly that we're all going to log out of this link and then log on to the next link for the meeting with the Commissioner for Children? Yes, sir. Perfect. Members, I'll see you at the in the next meeting, which will start immediately after we end this call. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. A very good morning to the Commissioner for Children, Ms. Nomdo, as well as the Director General of the Western Cape Provincial Government, Mr. Malila. Uh, feel welcome to the Standing Committee on Social Development. My name is Gillian Forsman, and I'm the Chairperson of this committee. Uh, members, I'm now going to ask you to please introduce yourselves. Hi, Ricardo McKenzie. Wendy Philander, Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, Namonde, did we receive any apologies for this part of the meeting? No apology, Chair. Thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Van Member Baku Force Chairperson. Thank you very much, Namonde. If we can just note that apology from Member Baku Baku Force, and also note that Member Van will be standing in as an alternate for Member Baku Baku Force. I'm now going to ask um, that we um, allow our guests to introduce themselves as well. Shall we start with the Commissioner?
Thank you very much. Uh, the DG. Good morning, um, Chair, and also members of the standing committees. Harry Melilla, I'm the Director General. Do we have any other officials and guests on the line? Can if I can please ask you to introduce yourselves? Good morning, members. It's Marsha Corston from the Department of the Premier Strategic Program. Good morning, Chairperson and uh, members of the Standing Committee. My name is Ngose Kayalala. I'm the Chief Director for Priority Programs in the Department of the Premier. Thank you. Any other guests joining us? Chair, um, the Premier may um, join this morning. I've asked him to try and join. There's cabinet at 10, so when he joins, I mean, if you'd like to give an opportunity, that would be um, mostly appreciated. But myself and the Premier will have to excuse ourselves at about 10 o'clock because it is cabinet. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mr. Malila. So when the Premier does join us, I'll give him an opportunity to engage. Um, and then we will excuse you at 10 to attend to to cabinet. Um, Ms. Nomdo. Uh, yes, Chair, I just want to indicate that there may be some members of the Children's Advisory Council on the line, as well as some graduate interns who work with my office. So I, I'm just not sure who is online at the moment, but. Uh, Please may we also acknowledge that that some members of my office, although not official staff, are also present. Uh, definitely, we, we definitely want to acknowledge them. I see, I can see a list of who's online, and I see someone called Sharmila. If I could ask you to introduce yourself. Nope, Sharmila. Shamila is just going to be an observer. Um, colleagues, if I could just remind you again of the cardinal rules of uh, video conferencing at the WCPP. Um, we ask that you please mute yourself when you are not speaking. If you would like to engage the, the chair or get my attention, you're welcome to use the chat function as well as the raise your hand function if that is available on your version of Microsoft Teams. When you do speak, please identify yourself. Um, and feel free to switch on your microphone and your video. This meeting is being broadcast live on YouTube, so it's always nice for members of the public to see who is talking. Um, I also want to just ask if anybody um, is going to present. Once you are finished with the presentation, if you can just make sure that your um, the, the presenting function is turned off, because otherwise it will sort of flag that screen. Um, members, the purpose of today's uh, meeting is for this committee to get a briefing from the Western Cape Commissioner for Children on the operations of the Commissioner's Office, as well as the progress made in setting up some of the uh, aspects of the office. And you know that uh, we've been hard at work uh, for the last uh, year and a half, but to appoint a Commissioner for Children, and following that appointment process, the Commissioner has now um, been in office for a while. The commissioner has been hard at work. Um, I follow the work of the commissioner on Twitter, and I'm always very excited to see what the office gets up to. Um, and our last engagement was with both the commissioner and the um, the department of the premier, where we got an update on the sort of start of the setup on the operations of the office. And we've asked the commissioner to come back today to do a presentation on where she is. Um, I think the Premier has joined us, so I'm going to ask um, Premier Alan Windy if he would um, like to open this part by making a few introductory remarks, noting that he will leave us at 10 for Cabinet. Premier, over to you. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, good morning uh, to the uh, members. Uh, good day. Good, good to see you all, as well as obviously the Commissioner. It's always uh, good to be on a platform with the commissioner and uh, to see what the commissioner has achieved and, and her focus uh, over the last uh, short while uh, during these very, very difficult times. And uh, it is really great that, uh, you know, that she's also now presenting to 
to this uh, committee on uh, on what has been achieved and also her own vision and uh, just to watch how uh, how she's fitting into this role. So really great. And I, and I apologize that I can only be here for a short time. Uh, and the DG as well, he'll also have to come to cabinet. I won't let him uh, get away with it so easily. Um, but uh, thank you very much, Chair, and uh, for the opportunity to at least be here for a short period of time. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Premier Windy. Um, I'm also now going to ask the DG. DG, are there any um, introductory remarks you'd like to make before you have to to leave us? Yeah. Chair, thank you very much. I mean, maybe just from my side as the accounting officer, um, I've had many engagements um, with the children um, commissioner since he's um, assumed office. Myself and the Premier also had um, discussions um, with, um, the, um, with the children's um, commissioner. We are assisting her internally, obviously, with the setup of the office, and I mean, she will present on some of those things um, um, later. We're also assisting her internally, obviously, with um, accommodation um, requirements, but a kind of permanent accommodation um, requirements. And then, obviously, also on assisting her to basically equip the office, um, et cetera. But in terms of the initial four-month setup period since his um, assumed duty, I mean, institutionally, the Department of the Premier um, Assister, we have made budget um, also um, available, obviously understanding, you know, that it's a new entity. And there's uh, um, this agreement between myself and the Children's Commission. And I mean, we, we, we indicated to each other that this is a new baby. We're rearing this baby um, together. Um, it is the second of such institutions um, in this province. And we need to make sure that the Children's Commissioner is properly set up that she can actually execute um, her functions. There's also regular um, reporting check-ins between myself and herself. And we've also agreed that on a quarterly basis, there will be formal discussions between herself, myself, and also um, the Premier. And then obviously when we have these sessions at Parliament, because she reports directly um, to Parliament from a legislative perspective, that we will also join um, in that. But I'm quite excited, Chair, for um, the work that, um, that she's doing. I mean, it's somebody that I've got to know that's passionate about the rights of children and where they are. And our commitment to the Department of the Premier is to give her the best opportunity to make sure, you know, that this institution achieve its objectives and its goals and to actually set up for success and ultimately set up the institution for success, but success for the children. So that's some of my opening comments here that I wanted to make, but thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, DG, and thank you to both you and the Premier for making some time um, this morning, um, as well as for the support that you've given to the Office of the Commissioner. Members, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to the Commissioner for Children, Ms. Nomdo, um, and Ms. Nomdo will be making a presentation. After that, members will open the floor for questions and answers. Morning once again, members and members of the public who join us, and especially the Premier and the DG and their staff for the invaluable role you have played in helping me set up the office. Uh, I just wish to especially acknowledge Ms. Samantha Morris, who has acted as my sanity in relation to managing the appointments in my diary and some of the administrative work that goes into helping me function on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm very excited to join you four and a half months into my appointment. Wow, time flies, hey? I mean, really, it's been a fantastic time to start the office. I spent the first three months engaging people, and now that we're in lockdown level one, but also now that we have finished that initial period, People are expecting action, and I do not want to disappoint. And so I will go on my uh, program jaunts uh, with full fervor, and I'm very much looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you and also with other members some of the ideas I have for the vision and the programming of this office. So I'm going to switch to presentation mode now. And I just want you to assure me whether you can hear my um, whether you can hear my video as well, because it's um, sometimes it's not very clear the video. 
um, and there's something special one has to do about starting it. So let me try my utmost here. Can I have an indication whether you can see my screen? Yes, um, I can. Okay. So I think that, uh, you know, I, I am not in here in this job, as we colloquially say, for speck and boinkies. I am here to try to optimize this platform to make revolutionary shifts in our society in order to fulfill and realize the rights of children. All of us admit we are not on a good trajectory. We hear in the media and also from our own personal experience of violations of children's rights on a daily basis. And we have one of the most remarkable records for violence against children in the world. And so it is important that we make an, a very big shift in how we address this matter of violence against children, but ultimately of realizing the rights of children. And so I don't set uh, for ourselves an easy goal. I say the vision of this office will be to reimagine and remake childhood, which means we must depart from the current trajectory we are on and set ourselves on a new path, a path of imagination, of creation, and of hard work to make the programs in the office of um, the commissioner, but also, more importantly, the programs of government work optimally for children. And so this vision I, I put out there as a bold statement, but also as an invitation to everyone in society to join me in this vision of reimagining and remaking childhoods. You will know that I am particularly known for my connections directly with children. Children's participation is one of the arms of the rights of children. So shortly, just to frame children's rights, we frame them with three Ps, children's protection rights, which we are very familiar with, children's provisioning rights, which means the services to be provided for optimal well-being, and children's participation rights, which means their acknowledgement as independent, autonomous persons and contributors of our society. And it's these three elements of rights framed in international law and in our own law that must work in concert to bring balance to the lives of children. And so I will especially work on child participation rights as a model in my office, because I think that is one of the things that will shift us onto the trajectory of primary prevention of violence against children. And primary prevention is done by shifting the norms and the way the society operates. And so I believe if we have a strong child rights culture in society, we will begin to see a difference in violence against children. Uh, I want to invite you, and I hope it will work well, um, to listen to this one minute presentation by one of the first child government monitors, Lucanio Sanyamba. He's, 11, he is, he's grade 11, 17 years old, lives in Philippi East and schools at Rhodes High. But his claim to fame in my office is that he is my official speech writer. He is the one that frames the work I do in poetry. And so I want to invite you to listen to his poem about his experiences of working with me. Uh, Commissioner, we don't have sound on our side. Maybe turn up the, the, 
volume on your computer. Okay, um, let me try that again. holding you the first at first my mind wasn't pleased for this present is upon age i speak hasn't the world full of the naive and stubborn-minded yet growth intervened and i saw this is a childlike being listening and understanding to children like me working in relation like partners working the dream guiding but letting us lead govern systems children's rights policies at work seem seemingly seem perfect but needs work now i see walls falling now i see now working with this childlike being is like letting my voice sing feeling like the world gives an ear to me well it does at this point as you can see the children are we and the commission is the might to implement this week did you hear that yes ma'am Okay, great. I can also provide that poem in writing to the committee so that you can listen to it again with the presentation. Um, and he's basically talking about the fact that the commissioner's office provides a mic to amplify the voice of children. I reiterate in every presentation that I am not the voice of children. They have their own voice. They are their own people. They have capacity to express themselves. And so my office is merely a platform to put into the public eye some of their ideas, thoughts, and feelings. We've been very fortunate um, in the office of the commissioner. I have felt so supported by government services, you know, and the communication services especially has been fantastic. Government communication services have worked with me from the beginning to take the vision that I have in my mind and articulate it in design. And you will see there the logo for the Commissioner for Children. It is a logo developed collaboratively with children and it took us two weeks to, to finalize that logo. Uh, it was an exciting process and many children, even from other provinces, gave their input into what the commissioner's logo should look like. And so that is really the model of operation that I want to put forward and I want to constantly uh, show you that, that I'm working collaboratively with children to make the work of this office real you see that I was able to, after about 100 days in office, launch the Twitter page of the Children's Commissioner's Office at childcomwc. From the beginning, I used my personal Twitter page to just be accountable to the public and let them know on a daily basis by reflecting on what I'm doing in office. And now we have an official Twitter page and we have an official Facebook page that um, communicates the activities of the office. Sometimes they will speak the same message, the Twitter and Facebook page, and sometimes there's a bit of a difference between the two messages that they uh, reflect on on a daily basis. You will also see a poster on top, just a, a graphic on top, for some outline for the website of the Commissioner for Children. So we are also soon to launch the website of the Commissioner for Children, and we will let you have that website URL as soon as we launch that page. Unfortunately, one of the downsides is that we have not been able to create nor a telephone line, 
not a WhatsApp line for direct com uh, communications with the office. Uh, this has been hampered by um, lockdown and the, the negotiations with the telecommunications companies to try to get those services online. I much prefer a WhatsApp line because that is how children prefer to engage. And also uh, a telephone line uh, should be there once the office is staffed and there's actually a person who can answer that telephone on a constant basis. And so that's one of the conundrums that I face, but I will come to it later and it relates to the staffing of the office. But we have decided with the children that we have a slogan for the office, for us old timers, we call it slogans, for, for people who are in the new techno age, they will call it hashtags. So the hashtag for the commissioner's office is little voices must count. That is completely in line with what I said around my modeling child participation practice. Klein stemakis mut sakma. Amazwi, amaningni, makavakale. So that will be the byline, the tagline of the commissioner's office, and you will see it on all the branding that we have done. These are the special group of people that inspire me to work every day. They are the children's government monitors. It is the approach that I have decided to take with my office to work in partnership with children. And so I'm going to once again play a small video on the first child government monitor. My name is Chelsea Boyka, a matriculant at Elfie River High School. How did I become the first government, children's government monitor? Well, as the chairperson of the RCL, I asked our RCL to write letters as to why they feel we should not be returning to school during the pandemic and posted on any social media platform. Not long after, Christina then contacted me about getting our message onto the radio. And yes, I guess that is how it all started. So Chelsea joined me on the first day in office along with two of her RCL members at Elsie's River High School. And since then, I've been building this cohort of child government monitors that does have some representation outside the city. Uh, we have representation from Stanton, Marmesbury, Franschhoek, Paul, but it is really not what I wanted to be. Constrained, of course, by moving around and connecting with children during lockdown, I depended on children's rights organization and self-nomination of child government monitors. And these child government monitors are now approximately 35 in total. And we meet quite formally, actually, every Friday night from 5 to 7 p.m. for a training program. In this training program, I help them to understand children's rights in the way that it is framed in international and local law. I help them to understand the laws that govern my office and other laws that have effect on their well-being and on their lives. As in rights and in law, children have the right to be involved in all decisions affecting their lives. And so they must understand how government works, how to engage government to bring their points across. Uh, however, the, the conversations don't confine themselves to 5 to 7 p.m. on Fridays. I'm often in conversations with them on a daily basis. And as we know, if we have adolescents and teens in our households, well into the small hours of the morning because that's chat time. And so we get to know each other and we get to know how we can help each other in our respective positions in society. Uh, the, the picture of the two next to each other is Chelsea and Lucanio. You've seen Lucanio um, 
before, the poet, as I said, and Chelsea, you've now met through her video. The very official looking gentleman is Alicia Marcus, who's sitting there in the mayoral chair or very official chair. This gentleman has a CV, I think, longer than me. He is in the Nelson Mandela Children's Parliament. He's the chair of the Western Cape RCL. He's the chair of his RCL in his uh, in his school. He is an ambassador, he's one of the top SA uh, youth ambassadors. So he is an aspiring politician <laughs> and an aspiring lawyer. And uh, we try to help and support him to, to reach those goals because, you know, one must build on the leadership platforms that you've established in childhood to have a successful adulthood. I am in conversation with his parents constantly also, so that we support the way that, that he can go and transition from a successful childhood to a successful adulthood. I must reiterate that consent and assent is very important to me. I build firm relationships with the parents or legal guardians of each of the children that I work with. It is important for them to know what their children are involved in and to be proud of their children, to affirm the contribution their children are making and to join me in telling their children how wonderful they are on a daily basis. The lady in the green uniform is one of our youngest uh, child government monitors. She's 14 years old. Vimbai Watambwa. She lives in Ocean View, and she is so confident in her abilities that she is actually our representative on an African Union project. She will represent us as we have been invited as the child government monitors to make a submission on youth development, which will focus on secondary education to the African peer review mechanism. And I've listed for you some of the submissions there that she will pull together in order to make our collated submission to the African peer review mechanism. Thus far, as in our training sessions, we've had discursive debates around equal education, mental health service provision in school, discrimination and dignity rights in school, comprehensive sexual education, representative councils of learners. These are but a few of the topics that the child government monitors have focused on, and they will then pull that together for the APRM submission. The fabulous uh, person that is represented with uh, hair that is also alive is Zanny Stevens, 16 years old. And Zanny brings a wonderful enthusiasm to the group. They taught us how to use pronouns they and them. How not everyone in the world is he and she. How the world is not binary. How we need to be inclusive of all peoples, no matter what their orientation. So I work so wonderfully with these child government monitors. And after a while, maybe three months after training, I've decided that 12 of them have advanced to the advisory council, which means that I consult them whenever I have something to think about. I put it to them and I hear from them exactly what direction they would advise me to take. And it is a partnership. It's not children rule the world. It's children who are equal citizens in society who join me in partnership to inform my decision making. You can see a panel on the top where we are in a webinar with the Iziko Museums. And there are three child government monitors who joined me in the webinar to talk about children's participation in the office of the commissioner. You, I can go on forever on this topic, as you can see, but let me move over to some more exciting things. You will note 
that this slide communicates to you that in my brand concept, I'm really drawing on the nostalgia of child play. This slide talks to everybody across the generations. There are some of us who are comfortable with our earphones or ear pods, and there are some of us who are comfortable with wire currencies and lollipops and paper aeroplanes and marbles. So in this presentation of my brand, I want to join the generations together. I want us all to remember that joy and that fun that we had through play. And so child's play is the concept of my brand. The brand concept is drawn through in my communications media. You would have noted when I made a presentation to one of the committees that I, I sent it to you on my beautiful letterhead. I'm hoping to be able to print some business cards soon. And when you receive mail from me, you will also see that wonderful signature that has been designed once again by government communications. We are also hoping to procure banners which will travel with me on my journeys into communities. And we are also going to put through some newsletters uh, from the commissioner's office. You see there's some promotional items such as t-shirts and cups and pens and pencils, which I would like to be able to get to be able to put across that brand to make the brand known everywhere we go. And so you can see that there are some of my other brand elements there, the wow, the pop, which just the, all these elements are sort of owned to the brand of this office. Now, it is fine to be in a little corner and dream big, but dreams won't become reality unless you influence, inspire others to work alongside with you. And so in the last few months, I have really been conducting many, many conversations to be able to dream together with stakeholders. Stakeholder such as prof professionals on WhatsApp groups, stakeholders who are very important to me, such as the MECs and the HODs in the social cluster for whom I have responsibility for oversight. And we have seen in person how the Premier and the DG are always there to back me up, to support me, to give me what I need. I've just done a little bit of analysis with the help of Ms. Morris of the meetings, and you can see that I've also been captured by the Zoom and MS Teams fever and conducted many meetings with, with DOTP, with the Western Cape government, and also stakeholders in the children's rights sector. You, you will have seen this wheel before, but it looked a little bit different. It shows that my vision is firmly child-focused, that my values are to be credible, holistic, inclusive, listening, and developmental, and an explanation for what that means it is the approach that I took to the office right at the beginning. It is the approach I shared with everybody about the dream that we would love to create for children. Very importantly, this revolution of change is not going to happen for children unless I connect with the most important and actually the primary duty bearers for children's rights, their parents their legal guardians, those who may have been appointed by the court as alternate caregivers for children. These are the most important people in children's lives. They will frame how children experience their lives, whether children can have well-being, can optimize that well-being. So, Parents for me are a very important role player in children's lives, but also in the work of my office. So when I go out, 
when I talk in communities, I will have special sessions with parents. But this infographic is also uh, illustrates something else. It illustrates how the three school doctors in, in the province, only three, can you believe it? We only have three school doctors. They're focused in the metro. And they listened to my dream and they translated my dream into a message for parents that I can take along with me for how parents can optimize the mental wellness of their children. So you build a dream, you invite people, they share the dream, and together you implement that dream. I also talk with and through the media to the society at large. And I think that I want to just explain to, to members my approach with messaging in the media. Often I am approached when a child has been violated, when a child has been raped, when a child has died. This is a very traumatic and very sad experience in the life of that family. Um, and it is often, unfortunately, just left as that sensational announcement in the papers. Nothing further happens. Nothing happens to address the causal factor, factors that lead us up to that crisis point. And so you will never find me going into the case of a particular child um, that has either passed away or been violated. I want to address the matter of violence against children from a prevention approach. And so whenever I'm given the opportunity to talk about violations against children, I create messaging of change. I explain to parents and to the community at large practically what we can do to keep our children safer. I appeal to the communities to support parents, to encourage parents. I, I encourage adults in society to keep their eye on the child 24 seven. Let us have a relay of those adults who are looking after the children who are playing in the street. We know what the situation is in our town, townships. Parks are often more dangerous than the streets. And so when the children play in the streets and they have their fun, as play is an important right and a developmental aspect, let us watch over them. Let us know where our children are. Let us not send them to the tuck shop alone. Let us make sure they move in groups and let us always make sure that they have the support of the adults around them and the watchful eye of those adults. That is our duty as adults and as duty bearers in society. We cannot escape that. We cannot abdicate that. We cannot throw our hands up in the air and say, government raise our children. No, we must become involved and invested and we must share those responsibilities with community members. And so I like these posters because um, those are the articles in the Sunday Times and the Burger that actually communicate this revolutionary approach to prevention of violence. Now, it may sound revolutionary to you, but in fact, it is well documented in science and evidence. And it is those kinds of messaging that I've gleaned through my many decades of working in the sector of how you can and have to make a real, a real change in the trajectory of the lives of our children. Now I, I have to share somewhat of a concern with members. It is four and a half months into office. I am the only staff member in the office of the Commissioner for Children. I don't see 
myself having additional permanent staff members in the year 2020. And you would ask me why not? And it is really unfortunate, I will return to the slide. It is really unfortunate, but the policy framework that was handed to me when I started in office, worked on very vigorously by the policy unit within the Premier's um, office. They did a lot of research. They put together their best thinking caps with the legal drafters, whom I've also speaken, spoken with. And, and they said, in order for the Commissioner for Children to achieve everything that her law says she should achieve, she needs at least a 12-person structure, and that is the diagram I showed you before, the 12-person structure. Unfortunately, that 12-person structure plus me would require a budget of 8 million rand in 2020 finances. However, I have been only uh, given 3.1 million rand earmarked for COE, compensation of employment or total cost of employment for staff members. Uh, unfortunately, the sad thing is I can afford three staff members. Three staff members that does not in, even include support to me personally in, in my in, in administration. Now, what this will mean is not that the public will say, oh, shame, poor commissioner, she's working alone. Poor commissioner, she's only working with three staff. No, the public and yourselves will expect me to deliver on the full mandate of my office. I can see myself having to clone uh, myself by eight. So I will have to be eight people to compensate for the gap in my office in terms of the capacity. I am supported by a part-time PA, only part-time. Uh, who helps me at the moment. Ms. Morris is fantastic, and I've mentioned her several times because that's how grateful I am uh, for her support. And the big delay, I am told by everyone within um, Western Cape government, is actually sign off on a national level. I, I wish to ask for some advice and guidance about what we can do to enable me to have the type of capacity that I would need to be able to run this office successfully, to fulfill the capacity within that structure. I've already had to make changes in that structure to economize on the, the capacity that I'm going to be receiving in three persons or three staff members. But I am never one to sit on my hands. I don't weep for long because I think if I don't have hope, if I'm not inspired, if I don't make a plan, then everybody will lose faith. And so I'm driven by my passion and have recruited a cohort of graduate interns. I hope that they are, they made it into the meeting. We see Candace Warner, Waioka Gray, Zama Kumwalo, and Inari Silvia representatives from the three public universities. One is a PhD candidate in social work with a master's in family law. One specializes in violence uh, and one a violence prevention, let's say that. One is a master's law student, child law. One is a master's graduate in child and family law. And they have been helping me to frame the office by providing necessary research support in matters of looking at other children's commissioners, their approaches to office, particularly their child participation practice, looking at the inquiries and complaints that I've received to my office, tabulating that, analyzing that, enabling me to hand it over to Dr. McDonald for his team to review so that we may reflect on what these complaints and inquiries mean in relation to challenges within the child care and protection system. 
Also, I have decided that we really need to make one of the focus areas of research for this office and for monitoring, investigation and improvement, um, the improvement of the child care and protection system. It is one of the critical systems that we need to have working in our country. Um, and also, the other aspect that I've decided to focus on is on the education system or the schooling system. Let me not say education system because then you infer basic education department. In fact, I am interested in the foundations for learning from the first thousand days of a child's life, which starts at the day of conception. And so these interns help me to gather information so that I may program effectively, so that I can frame the work of my office well. I also had lovely conversations with the DG and I said to him, you know, a, a government office is not a place to receive children. A government office is not child friendly. A government office is not the best we can do for our children in this province to show them what a safe haven can look like, what a place of hope and inspiration can look at, can look like. One of my child government monitors went and, and uh, used her imagination, Amy Lee. She went onto the internet and she brought me these images and said, why not create a child-friendly office for the Office of the Children's Commissioner that looks like this? Why be ordinary? Why not dream? Why paint your life in only one color? And so I've been working with the help of the DG and public works to identify a house or a property that stand alone to create this kind of fantasy world for children and with children that can be an icon in our province that will be part of the tour of the city when, when visitors come a place where we can welcome people and show how we have tried to do our best for children. I'm wrapping up. I know I've spoken quite long. I thank you for your patience. You can see that I'm ready to roll. And there I am, my avatar, as the children would say in this day and age, with my cape. And you may not have noticed it, but I am wearing my cape today. I had a special cape made and I, I'm having special capes made for children when I go out to the communities where I will have conversations with service providers, parents and children around children's rights. And I will feed back these inputs into the government and governance systems. I'm very excited to say that it's been confirmed from everybody and it's no mean feat to get provincial government, local governments, district government systems to all work in concert together to create a program for me to visit by starting in Matikama, as I had envisioned, from the 26th of October. And I will be visiting from the, I will be there from the 26th until the 30th going from community to community, talking with appreciative inquiry with all the stakeholders and duty bearers in children's rights. And the golden prize for me, talking with children themselves about their lived realities and thereby recruiting some new child government monitors from the places furthest from the seat of power in the most rural communities to have children who work with me and communicate with me daily. One of the other aspects that I'm looking at is formalizing my oversight strategy, which means how am I going to gather information? What am I going to gather information on? How will I share this information, not only with you in reports, but with the government to be able to improve service delivery and with society to just give us a litmus test of the status of children in our society. So I'm looking forward to work with researchers 
to create some insight into how our children are doing in the province. At the end of the year, we will have a children's advisory group workshop so that we bring all the child government monitors together. They've never met. Some of them I've never met, but they are so bonded and they are so looking forward to, to get together and to consolidate their work. We will particularly concentrate in this workshop on our submission to the Children's Act Amendment Bill. Where, when public hearings happen next year, I want those child government monitors to confidently be able to make a submission from themselves, by themselves. I've also started engaging with libraries in the city. We have eight GBV hotspot areas in the city on the list of 30 mentioned by the president. Isn't that quite something to decry? Eight GBV hotspot areas. So I will work again with my violence prevention approach and to work on building the resilience of children and the positivity in children's lives. And in those, in doing that, I will go to libraries in these areas and host reading sessions with children to model to parents and to service providers that we must constantly be giving hope and acknowledgement to children, especially those children who find themselves in dire need of support. I will also be working together with the Commissioner for Police, the Commissioner for Corrections, whom I've already met and built good relationships with, as well as the Head of Social Development and the, the Acting Head of the NPA and Civil Society Organizations. And instead of being sensationalist on every account, of how children have been failed by the criminal justice system. I'm going to invite all those players to work with me to reimagine a more child-friendly justice system. And then we are going to work towards implementation plans to actually change the justice system for children. I've been very privileged that I've been so well received in the province by every stakeholder, there has been, everybody has really come on board and said, we need this for children. We're looking forward to you and your platform for children. And I'm only but a platform. I cannot change the world alone. And I cannot change the world all at once. But I will try to do my best to change the world for children, one person at a time, and one step at a time. Thank you so much for your attention. I will end this presentation now. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, sorry, Ms. may Mendo. I just, sorry, can I just, um, can I just show you one more thing? Yes, you may go ahead. Uh, I'm going to give children the last word. Th these are mandate sharing posters. And I'm going to again give children the last word. Are you sharing your screen? Sorry, um, are you indicating to me, Member Bosman, that you cannot see my screen? No, we can't see anything. We can't see anything. There we go. I've got the, we've got the PowerPoint up now. Can you see it now? Yes. Can you just tell me whether you can hear the music? I could hear something. Yeah, I think you just have to press play again. Ah, 
We are now having children speak in all three languages simultaneously. <laughs> so um, let me choose one. Let me choose the English version, but as you can, can you see my screen still, um, member? Yes, we can. Okay, yes, let can. me choose the English one. We, we still don't have any sound on our side. Do you want me to try and play it from my side? Okay. Um, let me just see. Uh, are, are you saying that you may be able to fix it from your side, Member Bosman? I would really like for you to be able to um, hear the sound. So let me give it one last shot. There is a special person in our province that must protect children. She is called the Children's Commission. You you hear sound, but now you hear many voices. Am I correct? Yes. We hear all three of them. Yes, you hear all three of them. Okay, let me stop there because I think that you get the gist of, of what I'm trying to say. Um, and I will share this presentation, or I hope Ms. Jamsi has, has shared this presentation with you so that you can at leisure um, view the presentation, view the videos, hear the children's voices. Those um, those infographics were also created by government communications, but the audios were created by the child reporters of RX radio station, the only radio station in Africa run by children. Uh, member Bosman, are you going to try to help me out? Uh-uh. We I don't hear the 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 audio. There is a little button that you have to shift before you share screen. Um it just says include sound. So on your screen when you see all your presentations, there's a little button to shift. I'm just checking again. When your screen divides and you see all the choices for the screens you can make, is just on top of that, there's a little button. I don't have that. Shall we give it one more try or shall we give up? Are members happy that they get, the, uh, get an understanding of what I've tried to do? Or shall we give it one more try? I am at your mercy. Um, I think if you could try one more time on your side, because we could hear it earlier. So if you just press on one of them, we should be able to hear it again. Okay. There's a special person in our province that must protect yeah. children's rights. She is called the Children's Commissioner. She has been given superpowers to do her job to protect all children. Her first superpower is to look for anything in government that stops them from making children's lives better. For example, she wants to understand if schools and clinics are good places for children and how to make them feel safe. Her second superpower is to gather information that helps us understand children better. 
She wants to know about children's dreams and worries. Her third superpower is to tell everyone how wonderful children are and that they must be valued. She asks adults to listen to children's views and opinions. The Children's Commissioner listens to children, especially when nobody else wants to, so that everyone can do what they need to do to make children's lives better. Did you hear that? I did, and I'm sure the members were also able to hear it. Success. You see, I, I always set ambitious goals. I never knew how to embed videos, to embed audios, to play audios. Now I know. So thank you so much for your patience and for hearing me out. I really look forward to engaging with your questions. Thank you very much for the presentation. I think it was probably one of the most creative presentations I've seen in a long time. And we've done over almost 200 days of working virtually so far. I mean, one of the remarks I made yesterday when I looked through it was that it reminds me of a cartoon called The Powerpuff Girls, um, <laughs> of those sort of superheroes. So it's really engaging and catchy uh, branding. And it was also very nice to see Mr. Alessio Marcus there. Um, I remember when I was in the city of Cape Town running the Junior City Council, he was the deputy speaker at the time. And you are right, he's a very ambitious young man. And I'm, I'm grateful that we've got young people who've engaged with the work that the commissioner has done. Um, members, we're now going to move over to the question and answer session. So if you could um, raise your hand and indicate to me whether you've got a, a question, that would be very helpful. Okay. Are there members for what? Member Van Kuchel, do I know to you? Hello, Chairperson. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah. I Thank know you. you, then Member Philander, and then Member Makamba Boycha. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, um, just allow me to welcome the report from the, of the presentation uh, of the uh, Children's Commissioner. Uh, my question was actually in relation to the relationship between the, the, the Children's Commission's office and the different departments, like the Department of Education, Social uh, so, um, social Development, and Community and Safety, but she touches on that. And I'm, I'm very happy because I think those three or three departments play a huge role uh, in making the province and the world uh, a safety place for our children. But what I really, I'm not feeling comfortable on, if I look at slide nine and 10, uh, regarding, or she, she mentioned that she's the only staff member. And for me, it's like, and we are failing her office, we are failing her, and we are failing the children of the Western Cape. Remember, on Brag, we are bragging, we are the first province with the Children's Commission. And four months line, uh, along the line, we are still sitting with only the commissioner in the office. And we are really, really uh, uh, disappointing of, 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 I mean, like, and we are not uh, um, giving the support that he really needs if we are serious with uh, uh, making the province a safer place for our children. Um, Chairperson, then I just need clarity on this. Who approve? Uh, who, who approval do we, we? Why do we need the national approval uh, if it comes to the sign off? Uh, I, I need just need clarity there because we appointed the province appointed this children commissioner, so we are supposed to look at the at the at the at the the the, the whole component of the children's commissioner. So I just need clarity on that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, member Philander. Chairperson, thank you very much. I also want to extend my thanks and appreciation to the Children's Commissioner for the very broad outline of her mandate. And yes, Ms. Um, Nomdu, we did notice your cape this morning. Um, Chairperson, we had a situation yesterday where two three-year-olds, a boy and a girl, went missing in the towns of Newton, Wellington. 
uh, in my constituency. They were found this morning and the boy were found dead, unfortunately. And also allow me to extend my sincere condolences to, to those families. Um, Chairperson, I hear what the commissioner is saying that um, she won't dwell into individual cases. And I also note that she has said that she had deliberations with the commissioner for police and um, the justice system as well. Um, Cha uh, Chairperson, I would like to know in those deliberations, how does the Office of the Children's Commissioner anticipate to, col to, to collaborate with those um, state departments in order to ensure that justice prevails to those kids that are harmed? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Member Makamba Boycha. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, and uh, the presentation by the Children's Commissioner. Uh, I just want to say I'm very disappointed that the office is currently not uh, on par in terms of the establishment and, and employment of people that should be assisting in the office. However, I just need to check with, with the Children's Commissioner pertaining to the cases that she has already dealt with that she she probably won't be able to get us into details. Um, I see the one of the mandate of the commissioner is to investigate part of the as as part of its mandate is to investigate cases that are being submitted at his office. And I I remember there was a case that I, I actually forwarded to the children's commissioner uh, desk sometime in July. Um, I'm not sure, I think it's around July month. And I got some very uh, dissatisfaction in terms of how the matter was being handled. In case, in fact, the matter was never handled because the commissioner's response was that it doesn't fall in, in, in within his mandate of, of his office. So I want to understand what type of cases does his office uh, assist pertaining to children because this was a matter of a, a case i think of, of west coast of an eight-year-old child who was raped by his father and and um so there was no justice that was served in that particular case so my uh, writing to the commissioner was for his office intervention in terms of how best can his office assist that particular case whether be it uh, the side of psychologists or the side of justice and all that. So I want to understand from the office of the commissioner, at what stage does he really take cases in terms of, in line with the mandate of, of his office where he says he monitors, he investigates and all that. So where does the bus stop with his department? And, and secondly, are there any cases that the commissioner would like to share with us like, like case management of how many cases has she dealt with and of those cases how many has been of success in terms of since she she has taken the office thank you Chair. thank you very much um, i'll give over to member mckenzie and then we'll do a round of answers and we'll come back for another round of questions member mckenzie thank you chairperson and thank you to the commissioner i must say that i really enjoyed the presentation is always happy to see the involvement of children uh, in this process um, and we're looking forward to see more of them as part of this committee and I really love the cake. <laughs> I think it adds something that we have not seen um, and I think that's why as this committee, as a member of this committee, we're uh, privileged to be part of this process for five years and see it culminating into where we are today. I think uh, obviously one of the the key things is the staff establishment. And in the meeting, I think on the 2nd of September, if my date is right, with the department and the director general and the premier was also in that meeting, as far as I can recall. Obviously with the staff establishment, which is the nature of the Public Services Act, and it's something that I wish it was in our control. Otherwise I would set up, uh, hopefully the, hope the department set up this office the first day that you were appointed. But obviously, one is mindful that there are uh, 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 laws and regulations which one has to abide by as members of this parliament. We obviously are the, the custodians of these laws. 
and I know that uh, the staff establishment can only be signed off by the National Minister of Public Service and Administration. Um, and I know there has been, unfortunately, been a stumbling block, uh, and they are waiting, because I did ask for that briefing on the 2nd of September, because it was something that was of concern to me as well. And I certainly uh, I hope that the Premier and his team will follow, obviously take this matter up urgently with the National Minister to ensure it gets done speedily and urgently, uh, because this is something that is important for this province. That's why we set up the uh, Children's Commissioner. Uh, but other than that, I'm, I'm really excited to see all the good work that's been done by the uh, Commissioner to date. And it's exciting to see that the, the because I do follow her on social media, and I'm always excited to see what we've done in this short period of time. Uh, uh, but one obviously has to do it right because you are dealing with children, actually, and you are dealing with the lives of children. Uh, um, and you have to do it 100% right to, to avoid anything going wrong because children, as we all know, are very sensitive. And you don't want some somebody who's been working with a commissioner to find out a month later due to a process that person might or might not be involved. It will be the most devastating thing to that child for their whole life. So I do think it's important that we do get that process right. And I can, uh, hopefully it will be done much sooner than later because, like I said, it's very important every day that's gone as a day too many. But I have to commend the commissioner for the work that she's done. Um, and we do hope that th these things do get done sooner than later. Thank you, Commissioner Mamanda, for your work. Thank you very much, Member McKenzie. Um, Ms. Nomdo, do you want to take that round and we can do a, another round after that? Thank you to the members for their questions. I think let me start with the most difficult one first uh, in relation to specific cases of children who have been violated. The office, as described in law, is an oversight mechanism. It is a mechanism to make sure that the systems of government do their work. There are systems in government, services in government, that must investigate violations against children. There is the police system. There is the child protection system under the Department of Social Development. When particular cases come to my attention for action, I have to refer it into those systems of government that have been set up to do their work. The Office of the Children's Commissioner cannot be seen as a shortcut to, to get quick relief. For me, it must have a strategic, and systemic and systematic value. It must have the value of improving a system of government, a service in government that can work for all children. Because, you know, in the children's, in, in Department of Social Development, for example, I hear uh, you have uh, this kind of uh, approach where if somebody approaches the MEC and they ask for urgent, urgent intervention, there may be urgent intervention for that particular case, but does it really improve service delivery or that system of support for all children in the province to be able to make a, a good and stronger support process for all children, we must work with the system. And so, I will, for example, if I notice, and as I have noticed, many cases who come to me are around the child protection system, not working effectively or efficiently. And I have to give Dr. McDonald and his team the opportunity to say how they have dealt with a particular matter, what resolution they have come up with, before I can add my advice and recommendations. Remember, I don't have a punitive orientation in this office. You wrote that law. My law guides that I must make advice and recommendations to improve a system. 
So I must transform a, a, a society, a system of government, merely with influence. I have to encourage them to change cultures within the system, to increase the response rate, to look at their failings, to look at their challenges, to work on that so that it benefits everyone. I understand that we are desperate to find relief because it touches me to the heart also every day when I hear a child is violated. There is no immunity for me in emotion around when children are not protected from harm. It is the reason why I do the work that I do, because I want to make a change. But I think the approach that I've taken is to be strategic and systemic and systematic. If there are many cases in the child protection system, you may find that I investigate the entire child protection system, or I create public hearings for people to give us their input are around how the child protection system can be improved. I think I want us and encourage us to think of this as a platform to work in a different way. Um, and so I hope you will bear with me and, and help me see if this way of violence prevention and working strategically will move things forward for all children. So let me deal with the issue around the staffing then. Uh, yes, it's very, it's very frustrating to hear that you have to go it alone and you have to uh, you know, depend on part-time support from the office of the Premier. It's very frustrating to hear that the National Minister hasn't signed off because it's a new structure and public service and administration would like to understand how that structure full uh, um, how that structure falls within the system of government. Um, and so I think those are the kind of queries that have come up. Myself, I'm a statutory uh, appointment, but everyone in my office will be government employees. And so the sign-off does rest with the public service and administration. Um, I, I think the DG and all his staff have done the best they can to petition um, that process to move forward speedily. I'm wondering if there's something more that cannot be done in, in relation to that. Uh, but fear not, and don't lose hope, don't lose faith. I'm not here to play. Okay, maybe I'm here to play with the children and talk about their rights. But in my job, I take it very seriously. I'm not going to wait for staff to act. I'm going to act, I'm going to work. You're going to see me in the field, in the communities, um, doing what I think is a strategic way for addressing the plight of children in our province. I hope I've covered that. Um, I think uh, there was satisfaction that I am working cooperatively with the departments. Remember, my scope is very narrow. My scope is only the social sector cluster for oversight, education, health, social development, cultural affairs, and sport. With everyone else, in every other sphere of government, I must also try to influence the way they work, try to lobby them to align with the, with the child rights approach. Um, let me make an example of the, the conversation I, I had with the Commissioner for, for Police. I said to her, children have gone missing. What advice do you want me to put out into the media, to parents and the community? And we came up with a three-step plan. One, do not wait 24 hours when a child is missing. Report immediately. Go to the police with a recent photo of the child. Tell the honest and fullest truth about when last you saw the child. This will help to speed up the process of finding a child. We cannot be finding children dead. We need to act 
more swiftly when a child goes missing. And from my perspective, we need to act on the risks placing children safety in jeopardy. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Lomde. From my side, I just wanted to ask, um, in terms of uh, setting up the telephone line and the WhatsApp line, are you able to tell us whether you're currently considering asking the networks to zero rate that, so to make it a toll-free or data-free setup, as well as um, the website, whether that website can be zero rated, uh, like some of the educational websites um in the in the country at the moment and then um i think one of the things we have to look at is we have to look at innovative ways of funding the office of the commissioner specifically looking at public private partnerships and i think well, as a committee we also need to explore how we can leverage our um sort of oversight opportunities where we can also invite the commissioner along for instance um to that because it, it's really important that this um, office be um, fully capacitated to be able to deliver its work. And I think members, we also need to, to look at the budget process and where we can sort of nudge that process along when we get the, the different budgets. As you know, the functional um, oversight of how this com um, the commission's um, office functions falls within the department of the premier. And we're very fortunate that we've got um, member Ricardo McKenzie, who is the chairperson of the Department of the Premier um, and, and that standing committee. So we're able to sort of look at the functional aspects of how the office is managed and funded through that committee. And then we look at the, the work and how that committee influences uh, the Department of Social Development. So there's, there's lots of opportunities, I think, for us to look at how do we build capacity within the office of the commissioner. Um, and I agree the budget is too little for what the commissioner needs to do. And we really need to look at innovative ways of finding um, money from outside of government to, to be able to do that because we know government is going through a very difficult um, sort of fiscal space and we all know why that is. Um, I'm noting member Makamba Boycha has got um, a question, are there any other members who would like to, to pose a question before we close off? Member Van Fogel, Chair. Member Van Fogel, so you will go after Member Makamba Pocha. Would anybody else like to pose their last question before we, we wrap up? Okay, I then note Member Makamba Pocha. Thank you, Chair. And um, to answer the, the office, I just want to also find out from the Chance Commissioner if her department has already set up like a standard procedure, like a, the SOPs in his department, in her department, in terms of how they operate and how they do their processing administratively. Reason why I'm asking this is because of the fact that, for an example, if you lodge a complaint by, by the Children's Commission, for an example, I have not received any formal uh, correspondence from from her desk to say they have acknowledged the receipt of and this is what is happening. I only received a telephone call, and that's how my case was handled and closed. So I find it very um, 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 I don't know what word to to use. It's it's very informal the process in which they, they, they handle things, I just hope are available in that establishment of the office to capacitate the way in, in the manner in which they work so that they at least pose the, the issue of professionalism, not only us within the legislature. Maybe other people who are writing to the commissioner, maybe they will warranty a formal communication from her office acknowledging any kind of complaints that they are receiving on a formal uh, letter or correspondence. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Member Van Fogel? Member Van Fogel? Um, thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I must say I really love the positivity of the Commissioner. 
sy is so positief dat die raak somme my ook aan under the circumstances sy stay positive, so I really want to commend her on that. And then, Che, I, I want to know from the commissioner, her office role in government, um, if it comes to human traf trafficking, what, what role are they, our office play uh, if it comes to human trafficking? And then the last one, Chairperson, uh, given that the government has spent billions on, 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 on broadband uh, rollout, what are the plans to speed up connection issues for our office using the broadband rollout? Thank you so much, Chair. Thank you, Member Van Vogel. Members, just again, I'm asking, are there any other members that would like to ask a question before I hand over to the Commissioner for answering and for closing remarks? I see none. Um, Commissioner, I'm handing over to you. Again, I will deal with the hard one first. Member Makamba Bojia, I appreciate uh, the guidance that you've provided in relation to the expectations of yourself and other members of the public when engaging with me and wanting your, your complaint or even address just to be acknowledged. Um, I, you know, the, let me just be honest and say it is a capacity issue. I didn't have an operational email for more than a month. I, I have no staff to be able to help me develop standard operating procedures. Everything I do will be setting a precedent. And I don't want to communicate incorrectly because I don't have the correct advice of, of lawyers, social workers, and, and people with skills to be able to help me set a good standard of practice. I have compensated for that by making a personal connection with people who have approached my office. You are correct. It is informal. It is not professional. It is not what I want as us as the office to be doing. But it is the constraints of not having any support and of having to do all the kinds of issues myself. And so you can definitely com continue to hold us to that high standard. We must get our SOPs in place. We must get our complaints procedure in place. We must tell people how are we going to conduct investigations. But when I say we, it is going to take more than me. Unfortunately, I cannot, within the scope of the, the hours of the day, get to everything that I would like to get to. And I also do not have the expertise that I would like to add to the office with matters such as creating a standard operating practice. So I apologize to yourself and to the public that the office of the commissioner has had to relate to them informally. I think that let me deal with the matter that I didn't address in the first round um, mentioned by member McKenzie. When staff are brought into the office, it is very important that they be the correct staff members, that they have the highest level of clearance. Um, from the legislative framework, I am guided and everybody else is guided who works directly with children, that you have to have criminal clearance Plus, you have to be checked with the Sexual Offenders Register and the Child Protection Register. Everybody who works with my office has needed to undergo that process. Even the graduate interns who have had no direct contact with children have had to go through that process because I insist that we do checks on the highest levels possible. And, um, you know, Miss Morris will... Uh, hopefully travel with me to, to the workshop spaces in Matsukama. And even though she must have been checked by government when she was employed, I have insisted that she be rechecked in terms of her criminal clearance. And uh, Masha and Kaya have, have really supported me in the way that, um, you know, that programmatically I would like to give 
expression to the office and make sure that we get the right people and that we, we do things correctly. Better to do things slowly and correctly than rush into it and make huge mistakes and set precedents that are regrettable. And I think that that uh, is my ethos around even the previous uh, issue that has been dealt with. Yes, I would love to have uh, partnerships with the communications uh, companies so that we can have zero rated lines and websites. There's even been a, um, a suggestion from a member um, in this committee that we have a, a toll-free line, a WhatsApp line that has meaning. So, for example, um, 083 or 0800 voices. So the number would be 864237. So everything I do, I try to be deliberate. I try to see how we can add meaning. And I would really uh, appreciate support with you connecting me with, uh, with private public partnerships. Um, although I, I cautioned in my interview, everyone who gives money has an agenda and we must guard against that agenda and make sure that we are firmly in control of the agenda of the Commissioner for Children's Office. Um, I am also very wary about what Member Bosman alluded to in terms of the budget process. I am so afraid that I will end the budget year having sacrificed money because I haven't appointed staff on time. I haven't got the office. I haven't um, done the programs fast enough because lockdown happened when I was appointed and I couldn't get out into communities. I'm so afraid of losing the money that I already have. And I want to ask for advice how we can safeguard that initial 8 million rand that has been earmarked for the office of the commissioner so that we can at least have the resources that we have safeguarded and, and, and ring-fenced. It is a, budgets are always about prioritization. It's not necessarily about how much money you have. It's what you do with the money you have. So please help me safeguard the budget of the office of the children's commissioner. I think that, um, in relation to matters of human trafficking. The Center for Child Law has recently published a study on human trafficking, and I will um, share it with the, with the, um, with member Van Fuegel, uh, since she is very interested in this matter. It is important that we don't, um, that we in our approach and response uh, be, be motivated by the plight of people, by the plight of children, that when we act, when we think, when we develop programming, we must do it based on evidence. And so let us together study that report on human trafficking. And once again, I do my work best by connecting with the professionals in the field. It is why I've been able to work so far and so fast alone. I work with professionals who have my back, child rights stakeholders, who make sure I'm on board, make sure I'm informed, make sure that I can make the best decisions possible for a strategic direction for this office. And so I will, like with any other plight of children, be it child poverty, human trafficking, child abuse, the deaths of children, I will first consider the evidence, and I will also consider what evidence-based programming can be put in place to address these matters from a prevention perspective. I thank you so very much for allowing me to present and engage with you today. It has been my absolute privilege. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nomdo. Um, and thank you for the work that you've done in the four and a half months um, with the very limited um, people resources. And I have to say that judging by 
the output you've achieved quite a lot and I think we'll only be able to see um, the full extent of what this office can do once it's properly capacitated and we as members of this committee um, and I think mem all the members of the provincial parliament are always ready to assist where we can and I think yeah on the issue of the budget I think it was Joe Biden who recently said don't tell me what you value show me your budget and I'll tell you what you value and that's an important aspect because what's important needs to be funded properly. Um, I'm now um, going to excuse the commissioner and all of our guests. You're more than welcome to, to log off. Um, members, I'm going to ask you, um, are there any resolutions that you would like us to take forward or any um, uh, questions or points of information that you would like uh, to have as well? Um, Member Makamba Boicha. Um, sorry, Chair. Uh, should I log off before this um, this session of resolutions and questions? Uh, let me just check if Member Makamba Boicha had a follow up question before you log off. No, no, sure. It's not a follow up. It's just a recommendation, as we have alluded. Okay, um, Ms. Numbra, you don't have to stay for the the resolutions. Um, we know you've got lots of things to do and a short space of time, and I don't think your cape allows you uh, <laughs> more time. <laughs> Thank you to everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, Commissioner. Thank you. Bye. Member Makamba Bocha, you may go ahead with your um, recommendation or resolution. Sure. Thank you very much. Um, I, I just want a clarity seeking question in terms of whether this commission's uh, desk has a task team that is assisting the, 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 the commissioners, uh, children's commissioner to fully establish the office and, and so that the office is fully operational. So is there a specific department that is dealing with this thing or is it dependent on different stakeholders for its operation to be to be up and running because it seems like there is some kind of delay. If the the commissioner's office has been in the office for more than four months and still there's so many things that are outstanding, it looks like there is no accountability of some sort. So does do we have a task team or do we have a specific people or team that is dealing with this matter so that we can uh, make a follow up on this particular issue because it's a matter of agency. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Member. I have sent a letter which I received from the Chairperson of the Standing Committee on the Premier and Constitutional Development. And in that letter, it indicates that the Commissioner's Office is currently being supported um, by um, the uh, a senior official in the Office of the Premier. So that's the Commissioner's currently be su being supported by Mr. Lala, the Chief Director of international and priority programs in the um, office of the premier. So that is where the task team is currently um, sitting. So that letter I've sent to all members as well. Um, so you can have a look at that. So there is a task team, but as the commissioner indicated and as member McKenzie also mentioned, um, the structure of the office before the recruitment can be um, started needs to be signed off by the National Department of Public Service and Administration in terms of the prescripts of the public service law. So that's something I think we just need to keep our eye on as well. And I'm sure Member McKenzie will be driving that in his capacity as chairperson of um, the Premier and Constitutional Development Standing Committee. Um, members, are there any other recommendations? Members, I don't see any other recommendations or any other hands. No, Nomonde, anything from your side? Nothing from my side, Chair. Are you asking in terms of resolution or? Yes, any, any resolutions that you noted? I Oh, everything that you have mentioned, Chair, during your input, uh, during the meeting, to say, I think the Mrs. Namdo noted this, uh, they need to uh, setting up telephone, uh, setting up telephones, WhatsApp line in the office with zero rates. 
look at private uh, partnership. Um, yeah, look at, they need to look at innovative ways of funding uh, the office of the commissioner. Um, those are just general. General comments. No, thank you very much. Members, um, with that, thank you very much for your time this morning. Um, I wish you all a very productive week and go well and stay healthy and stay safe. The meeting is then adjourned. Thank you, sir. Member McKenzie?